Are you ready for them questions? I got, I got, um, I got, I got. And I'm coming, you're coming from more, from more specifically. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. Come on, more. All right, go off in that. All right, well, he's going to have to keep his mouth open and respond, but go ahead for more. How long I got for questions? Just so I know. Just Five just minutes. Know. Cool. So, Garfield, how come you're not addressing the source I brought about the problem with the Judas Berbers in the sense to where I didn't talk about um, uh, Idrisi from that source? I brought up uh, Valentina Fernandez talking about there being a, a, a Jewish population um, amongst the, the, the Wolof, the, 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 the Mandingo, and Futa, which would have been amongst the Fulani. How come you're not addressing that? I don't think um, I don't think Jews or a claim of Jews being around the Fulani or anything is the, is was the issue. The issue is the issue is. Hold on, let me stop sharing and let me let's go to the Judaized Berbers. What I brought up with that source is that source is saying that we tentatively again we don't know when we read these claims. That's one of the major things with that article. We don't know. Based on the claims that have been made by several Arabic sources, we don't know if certain stories are true, and that's why I actually brought it up. Let me, um, let me, let me actually, um, let me, let me do this. Let me respond to you this way. I said this is this is pretty much the whole article here, right? So I said, okay, it's funny that he would bring that up about different sources. Yeah, and you brought up, you brought up, yeah, I, I, did, I didn't mention. That's fine. That's fine. But what the purpose of me bringing that up is showing that there's a problem as far as interpreting sources from the past as far as these Jews are concerned. People have motives. So that's why I read the first page and I read the finally. It says, Valentin Fernandez isn't an Arabic source. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, never, I never said it was a... Was a you was just, a, everything you just said, Garfield, and you're talking through my time now, and I would appreciate it if you... So hold on a, I can't respond to what you're asking because you're not you're not responding. I'm I'm making sure you do. So again, oh, you're, you're saying stuff that sure. has nothing to do with the source. So the source stipulates that I brought out Valentin Fernandez. Is he Arabic or no? Is he a Muslim or no? I don't know. I don't know what he is. Okay, so stop talking about what you don't know and talking about what the I present. Valentin Fernandez, the why, the who's not a Muslim, why, who's not a Muslim, who's not a Muslim, and Leo Africanus, who's not a Muslim, whom I cited from this article stipulated that there was a, a Jewish population amongst those three ethnic groups and that again that they were Jews that converted to, to Christianity and also to Islam. So why aren't you addressing those from non-Arabic sources please? Because everything you're talking about is we got to worry about Arabic sources. Okay I didn't cite any Arabic source from this article. Let me let me say this carefully. So we so you're saying that there are people that were converted or these are lineal people. What are you saying? I, I don't understand. What's the purpose of bringing it up? That they came over. You see, you're putting yourself in a ringer. You're putting yourself in a ringer. If you're trying to say that these people were 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 Jews, why didn't they come off the ships practicing it? Because we have a number of people from these cultures. So you're not asking me questions. I'm oh, asking you questions. Man. Let me you ask me question. questions in your round. Let, let you keep not addressing the source. Is, so is the issue is... Garfield, he's got two and a half minutes. Garfield, he's talking to you. Go ahead. Yeah, but the whole thing is, this is crazy because if I'm telling so him, you... So this is why you got a problem. No, you're you're going to let, 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 let me ask the question because you're just, you're just running out the clock. And I, I don't appreciate that. And I can do that to you. I'm not running out the clock. So you're going to let me talk then. You're going to give me my time. Since you're not going to be honest about what the source is, we're going to go over it again. So the source talks about the fact that there's Gaul Jews that are black, right? That that don't live with the other people, that get rejected, etc. Right? But they're amongst the Wolof, they're amongst the Mandinka, and amongst the Fulani, so the people who would be the Fulani with them, right? And so the other source stipulates that they were Jews. Again, within the same article that you're running from, it's the Leo Africana stipulates that they were Jews who converted to Christianity and Islam. So you're saying, why don't we see them practicing? Judaism coming off the slave ship. Bro, I showed you a Muslim from Futa Toro, the area where it stipulates these Jews would have been that converted to Christianity and Islam. A man that spoke Hebrew and Arabic talking about in West Africa, he paid a tithe. I showed you a concert of them praying three times a day, what Muslims don't do. I showed you a concert of them still keeping a first fruit uh, a festival or not. Again, that's not a Muslim concept. I showed you a concept of, of 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 them keeping uh, the New Testament etc. in a way that, that that Muslims don't do etc. right? So again, I, sh I showed you a concept of the, of them writing the, the 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 New Testament in Arabic in the Gullah concept in the, the Gullah dialect. Deal with that. That's literal material culture. So here's the issue. 
So I said at the outset, I don't have to follow any rules. You don't. I stipulated what what your criteria was and you gave it to me. Right. You gave me a couple of words. You gave me a couple of traditions in terms of stories, et cetera. With that. You gave me all that. Right. What did I give? You? I gave you the same people. The Bani Israel gave you again in their language, in the Wallace language. There is Hebrew that they were able to they were able to connect to it and whatnot, right? So again, there's Judeo Wolof right there. I showed you Hebrew on the again. Did I say it was definitive? No, I said potential. What did I say about the about about the about the about the the the, the, uh, the documentary? I came on here last time with you and I asked you, are you saying the documentary wasn't making a definitive claim? And I was able to show clearly. I clipped it up and put it on my channel. Got a thousand views right now. The documentary clearly says you got Ephraim Isaac and the and the narrator clearly talking about. The yodes on the pews or whatnot. Richard Saracen was not brought in to deal with that. He was brought in to deal with cursive Arab, uh, cursive Hebrew. It's not cursive Hebrew. I agree with him. No one's making a claim it's cursive Hebrew. I'm talking about Judeo Arabic and whatnot. He's not brought in for that. That's not his area of expertise. And so again, I was part of emailing these 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 these, these, these scholars with Abu and other people or whatnot. I emailed the Arabic scholars and I emailed uh, a Solitario scholars and Hebrew scholars and such whatnot. Right. Again, I, and, the, and the Arabic scholars stipulate uh, the, almost uh, not unanimously, but a large group talk about there being Surah 114, Ayah 3, which, again, is neutral in terms of being Christian, Jewish, uh, Muslim, etc. It just says the God of humanity. Again, this is something that any basic person learning Arabic uh, uh, literacy in West Africa would have learned because this is how you learn Arabic in West Africa. And again, it's the lingua franca, but this is how you learn. You learn via via the, the short suar, the short suras of, 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 of the Quran and whatnot, which again, 114 is that a real short one. It's got just a few verses to it. So again, that's on the pews. And they also found la la ha Again, neutral, not no shahadatain, not Muhammadan Rasulullah. Again, I can't show you that on the pews. I can show you la la ha on the pews. I can show you three yods that, 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 that Ephraim Isaac and other people were saying definitively in the documentary. Is it definitive in scholarship? No. And I said that. I said there's no scholarly consensus and you're right about that. Hence, I put potential on it. I'm being scholastically honest about it. But you're not being scholastically honest and recognizing the fact that there is some people that do say they are Yods, that do say they do represent the shorthand version of Yahweh and that the Yods also do represent the Decalogue. So that's the name of God and the Ten Commandments. So you're telling me I didn't show you any codes? I showed you more name, than what hold, you hold on, hold on. The name of the name of God, the name of God, and ten, name of God and ten commandments. Where? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're talking maybe you should. Maybe you should watch the documentary you brought out to the people, fam. The name and, of and God. The question, that's exactly. What are you, what are you that's talking exactly about? what Ephraim Isaac says. So Ephraim Isaac, hold on. Who agrees with Ephraim Isaac? On that? Who does? The ten commandments, bro. Are you, Are serious, you serious right now? Again? No, no, yeah, hold on. All right, hold on, is, more. Is, Keep your, I, I, hold I, your train of thought, more. All right, I, I let him go over a little bit because they feel you playing with that clock. Go ahead, Garfield. What you want to say to him? You want to pick up from that point again or more first, when first, I bring you back up? Reset. First, go ahead, Garfield. The fuse is a dead issue. Man, no, that, no, you question him about anything you want to, something else, or you okay, want to continue this because we're on your time, man. I got to I I respond to him. Don't I got to respond? And I'm letting you respond right now. Not in, not in that. Not on that. Well, or whatever you want. It's your time. Go ahead. All right. Now, this is what he was talking about. The reference to the seven rulers recalls our eyes that be Sheshet's response, and which mentions the seven Biribani in Torah. This may not be a coincidence. The legend concerning the fate of the Jews of Timbuktu may be based on the events in Torah, or at least have borrowed certain particulars from them. It is not known at which period this legend took, sh took the shape in which it appears in the Tariq, whose composition and redaction extended over approximately 150 years. It may contain echoes of still other memories, according to Leo Africanos, Jews were forbidden to enter Timbuktu. And according to Valentin Fernandez, there were Jews at Walata, well-to-do but despised, earning their living as peddlers, goldsmiths, jewelers, whereas no Jews lived among the Arabs in the desert. Now, another story of a Jewish kingdom, this time in the Dara Valley, was written in the 17th century, contains an independent state of descendants of Ephraim, the son of Joseph, who had Christian Negroes under their tutelage. The latter re rebelled against their masters, raised themselves from their inferior position, and the valley was broken between Christians and Jews. After a while, the Christians broke the agreement and attempted to destroy the Jews. This time, they were decisively beaten and completely annihilated even those who tried to escape to Sijamasia in the Ziz Valley 
the place of the Christians as settlers of the region was taken by Muslims, who eventually got the upper hand of the Jews and inflicted a crushing defeat on them. The Sudanese slaves of the Jews reverently buried the slaves. Buried the slain. The survivors were forced by the Muslim prayers to pay jizya. All right? Now watch this. The stories of the free Jewish tribes circulated among Jews and non-Jews for centuries. They underwent variations, absorbed topical features, sometimes as they were, sometimes in modified form, omitted certain details or replaced them with others. They originated from the Jews who strove thereby to en enhance their prestige among their neighbors. But they might assume an independent existence and might even serve as weapons against the Jews, like the story of Ibn Mashal. They account at least partially for the legends about Judaized Berbers and Negro tribes. Now, let me just read that part again. They originated from the Jews who strove thereby to enhance their prestige among their neighbors. But they might assume an independent existence and might even serve as weapons against the Jews, like the story of Ibn Mashal. They account at least partially for the legends about Judaized Berber and Negro tribes. Now, watch this. To sum up the discussion, the following conclusions may be formulated. Traditions concerning Judaized Berbers and Negroes in the Sudan occur in Arab literary sources from the 12th century onwards. They are extremely vague and their emergence may be due to the following factors. The spreading of Jewish communities whose members were engaged in commerce all over North Africa. Two, the legends of the 10 tribes. Three, the ethnic and religious assimilation voluntary or force of Jews to the Muslim population. This accounts for the traditions of Judaized people converted to Islam. The possibility of Jewish influence on Berbers and even Judaizing by certain Berber groups should not be ruled out. That influence may have obtained not only in the pre-Islamic period, but also in the days of Arab rule, so long as Islam had not penetrated every stratum of the Berber and Sudanese population. It should not be assumed that it was very profound. The history of the spread of Islam and of the Arabic language and culture among the Berbers shows that they were not easily accessible to alien influence. Similarly, Berber influence upon Jews was confined to the accept of, of a few customs. This is what he left out. Example, the pouring of water at Pentecost and certain marriage rites. The decisive fact disproving the assimilation of large Berber groups is the complete lack of any pre pre penetration of Berber languages into Jewish literature. Now, let me say this again. Similarly, Berber influence upon Jews was confined to the acceptance of few customs. Example, the pouring of water and Pentecost and certain marriage rites. What happened is Berbers were once Christians, they were Muslims, they were Jews. So sometimes when they are influencing folks, they have different traditions within what they're doing. It's possible. There are texts in the Madhubi Arabic Jewish dialect, Berber names and appellations recorded among African Jewry during recent generations are certainly not evidence of the Berber origin of their bearers. Finally, let it be noted that all of the known, all of the known, all of the known movements of conversion to Judaism and instances of Judaizing, those connected with the Berbers and Sudanese in Africa, are the least authenticated. Whatever has been written on them is extremely questionable. So this is summing up the whole article, which include what he read. And this is why I read the first page. And In all fairness, I didn't want to read all that stuff, but I'm trying to give you a context of what he took out. And I said to him, why did you leave this out? You got to at least read the final judgment of what the author is saying and the possibilities. Again, it's a question sign. They don't know. They're writing from a distance, anachronistically. They don't, they don't know. know. Let me finish. Let me finish. That's five minutes. You read the whole five minutes. You finish, though. You read the whole five minutes. You ain't asking ask him one question. Go ahead. Five minutes and 30 seconds. Keep going. As far as, far as the pews, though, we got we to gotta, we gotta understand that the pews is still a question mark. There's no definite answer. So because... The guy, the 90-year-old guy says it's geese. First he said it was geese. Then he said it's, it's this. And I, I mean, who really took that guy Isaac serious? Only you. I don't hear nobody else jumping around about what Isaac said. I call him. I recorded conversation with the guy. And I'm saying to myself, there's no way this guy is coming and saying this and everybody's rocking with him. And you know that's a minority argument. So why would you come on Berean and say, oh, the Ten Commandments, he said it, no, no. Oh, like, so you're I mean, saying you fine. know he no, said let it. Let me finish, let me finish. So you're what, saying what, you what, know he said it. Hold on a second, so hold on a second. That doesn't make it true, my brother, because he said it, and I'm, and I'm not shouting. I don't need to shout to convince people. I am saying that although he mentioned that, who is really agreeing with the guy Isaac? Nobody is. 
Nobody. Show me an article by a scholar, even in the, 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 the Gates article. So you're mentioning this to win the argument. No, brother. It's a minority argument that nobody holds to except him. So why would you bring that up now to try to gaslight the whole situation? You're trying to gaslight the whole situation. Like, come on, okay, man. Hold on, Garfield. Let more go. I forgot more. You are part of Yak Gang? Oh, 100%. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Okay, he blowing shots anyway. All right, because people hitting me with other stuff. I got. I'm. I'm old. Go ahead. Go ahead, more. You got your five to pick up from there to go somewhere. So you got a five right now. I'm setting. I'm setting up all over. And y'all gonna do two more rounds of that. That I want to hear y'all closing. I want to hear how more close out with all of this after another two, 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 mm -hmm. five minutes. Right, go ahead. Um, you got from your myself. So this is the funny part. Like he's denying both sides of an argument, right? So there's, there's a two-sided coin to this language concept. He said, show me something in Judeo anything, right? And so one, I before I showed anything on the pew, I showed how the Wolof, in that article, they were talking about there was Hebrew for Wolof, in Wolof and in, in, for certain words in the Wolof. Whatnot. So that's a Judeo Wolof right there in Africa before coming on the slave ships. The Wolof are documented coming off slave ships, and they got my applicant, EM-132, at 12%, bro. Know that. So so there's that right there but when it comes to the pews again i've never made the claim it's a definitive not once not ever i've covered this from beginning to end and i've been super scholastic and thorough about the whole thing i talk about i got many videos on what about what all the scholars say that's why i said potentially on the slide that i showed you but when i came on here like i said i said that 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 the that the that the the documentary the people in the documentary made the definitive claim right the documentary itself right again I got no issue with Saracen denying the kind like the, not even not not even talking about that because he wasn't brought in for that he was brought in for a curse of Hebrew concept and you again you can see that on the clips that you showed everybody on this channel about the documentary so again are you gonna like so it, it's 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 scholastically honest for me to recognize that there's there's potentially that Hebrew there and that it's not a scholastic, there's no scholastic sense on it because there's one person. Now, guess what? That one person, let me ask you this question up front. Is this the University of Cincinnati sitting on that documentary, yes or no? I don't know about sitting on it. I don't know about that part. You've been you telling been everybody, everybody since day one, one that they're sitting on it. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if they're sitting on it. I don't know. I've never requested to view it or get a copy. Have they, put, have they released it publicly? I have no idea, bro. You know they haven't released it publicly, and that's I why there hasn't been any classic consensus put on there because said, it hasn't been released publicly. What? I said, I said but so, I but you, but you, but you, but you admitted is that you. I'm talking is my five minutes, but what you admitted is that you talked to to, to Ephraim Isaac, and then he he said the same thing I'm saying. So we, what you're not being honest about is there's at least one scholar saying it. It doesn't have again. I'm not saying there's a consensus, but you're not being honest in saying that there's one scholar talking about it. And again, you're denying the fact when it comes to the linguist, linguistics that I pointed to the fact that the wall off. I could point to a bunch of other tribes that got Hebrew, but I'm just being super specific so you can't run from it, right? The, that the Wolof recorded certain words that are Hebrew. So again, that's a mixture in their language and whatnot. And again, these are people that, again, in the same area in, that I'm that I showed you sources for saying that again, they, they went from Judaism to Christianity to, to Islam. And so again, they're claiming to be Jews that are Muslims in West Africa right now, coming from the same again, part of the people. That that the, that the sources I showed you again, you can talk about Sijamasa, Masa, you can talk about Tawat all day, you can talk about Judas Berbers. That's in Morocco, bro. That had I didn't mention Morocco not once. I didn't mention Berbers not once, fam. That has nothing. Sijamasa, Masa again, Morocco. Tawat again, Morocco. Not what I talked about. Nowhere near what I talked about. I specifically spoke about the Western Sahel and cities that were and places that were within the Kingdom of Mali that you would have had in your in your Catalan Atlas and whatnot. Meeting your demand head up, straight up, and gave you multiple places from Kikuya to Tindirma to Walata to, 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 to Kamnuri, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, another site source talking about that they were going to be that they were amongst the, the, the Wolof again, amongst the Mandingo again, amongst the Futa again, Fulani people. And these are all people that came off in numbers and high numbers. To the area I'm talking about. And so you again, I gave you more, more material culture for connecting to this Hebrew culture coming out of West Africa than what you gave me for connecting to the con culture coming out of coming out of Jamaica and whatnot. One minute left more. So are you 
Are you going to stop special pleading? Or are you going to address anything I said? Because at this juncture, you're looking like a cynic and not looking like somebody who's skeptic. A skeptic can look at the information like, you know what? You're making a point. I should accept this. I can't. At the very least, I can see the argument for some. I got I got to stop saying none. Or are you going to just keep beating the same old dead horse and say, OK, bro, it's none, none, none. Because you got to play the bad guy on TV. What you got to say, fam? I'm waiting. All right. Doctor, you're the you're among one of the only few people that's saying none, none, because you still saying none. Other people yeah, say because yeah, they hit yeah, my phone. We gotta, we gotta stop playing this game, Barry. Hold on, Barry. We gotta. We gotta he said we gotta stop playing this game. Oh, I'm gonna. I see you, bitch. Hold on, the bitch is on the phone. Let me, let me, let me, hold on a minute. I'm sorry. I got. I got to say because I walk away and I forget. And I got other supporters on the jack hitting me saying. If if they was if they were Jews in West Africa, how they get on there one boat go. ride and come here a couple of weeks later? Forgot who they were. Go there ahead. you go. There you go. That was what I was gonna start with. I said we could play the game more, and you could raise your voice up and down. You've been beaten the whole day because all your arguments have been refuted and debunked. You can hold that. Don't don't say a word. Don't interrupt because I shut up. No, no, Brian just came in. You I'm coming in. You so, so, up. so, if, if, if again, the sources you're running from oh, say they were from Jews yo, to Christians yo, to Muslims, yo, 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 and they're and they're keeping a Christian and a Muslim tradition when they come oh, on so so I, I just, I just, I just hell. What are they running from? What are they forgetting? What are we doing? Oh, Lord, you got, you got another oh, side. I didn't say your thing didn't even stop, but I had to say that. Why you laughing, Garfield? People, people don't like you, including me. My man in his feelings, yo. That shit is crazy. I never see my man so indiscipline in my life. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> yo, you better start this five minutes. Stop the laughing. You ready to start this five minutes? Yo, yo, look, look, at, look, at, look, at, look at this, look at this, family. Look at this, look at this. The problem is this, right? All right, start. He, he makes all the claims, and then he says they come and practice Christian and Islam. But the issue, again, is if the Wolof have words in their culture, that is influenced by Hebraic culture, whenever it came in, I am saying to you, my beloved brother, they would have come over with the traditions. You are making a grave, you're being so vague that, oh, it's possible, Garfield, it's possible, but you can't show nobody coming off the boat, practicing the culture, not one. All of it is conjecture, total conjecture. I'm addressed everything head on. Everything you have said, and by the way, with the wall of having Hebrew words, that you see, all you got to do is know that the wall of is a Niger Kanja language. So if the wall of are the wall of people and they have a language come in, it would have to be a loan word. There's nothing wrong with that. The Hebrew Bible got tons of Egyptian loan words. As a matter of fact, Egypt got tons of Semitic loan words. I got over 500 in the New Kingdom. So saying they have loan words, don't prove that. It proves interaction with Jews. It don't make the people Jews. If they are indigenous Wolof, that means they would have Wolof language as the first tongue, bro. If they have Jewish words, that means it's loan words. You kill your whole argument. You would have to show that the Wolof people that came off the ship was speaking 85% of the words they were speaking was Hebrew. You can't show that. You just made a, you made it one of the craziest claims I've ever heard on YouTube. And everybody in the audience know that. Everybody knows that. Now, as far as the pews, if you're saying it's potential, then you don't have an argument. That means, again, it's just like Billy Simon. It's a question sign. We don't know. There's no scholarship that has finalized this to make a conclusion. That's why with the Billy Simons, I could have said some other stuff, but I'm not going to fight you on that. I'm just going to say it's inconclusive, just like your whole argument today. It's all precipitated. It's precipitated based on certain information that you might see in the West Africa. But that kills you. Because if you're saying that they're Jewish in West Africa, why are they not Jewish when they got off the boats? That is the worst argument. You should have said, okay, you know what? We, let's go to this community because we know the wall off went here. So let's go to the wall off and see if we find that. Let's do that. There's no Judea wall off. Get out of here. That's a lie. You lied. There's no such thing as Judea wall off. No such thing. It's a loan word. That is not Judean wall off. Judea, when he said Judea Aramaic, you know it's filled with biblical Hebrew. Their language doesn't have biblical Hebrew prevalent throughout the language. So now you kill your own self with the wall off argument. A loan word is a loan word. There are loan words all over because it was trade. This is why I showed the Trans-Saharan caravan route from the beginning, saying that Jews went to different places. And that's why I showed the article where the expert on the Hebrews in Africa said that all the Jews in interior Africa were converts. So if they are converts, okay, they converted to a religion, 
Well, if they came over on the slave trade, going back to what Berean said, they would have brought that tradition with them. Nobody brought it because they wasn't doing it. The people that came on the slave ships. So that kills your whole argument. With all this argument that you're making, in the, you you would think 50% of the slaves, all the mandingos would have been coming over and saying, Yahweh, oh, la, la, and singing all these different tracks. They would have been on, on music videos right now talking about this junk. <laughs> But you can't prove nothing. nothing. You can't, can't prove nothing. But all you're full of is conjecture. With Billy Simons, with the same Judaic Berber's um article, the um the same Madagascar stuff. You start jumping around. Oh, Madagascar is not North Africa, brother. Oh, what about the Moorish Zion Temple, Old Testament, New Testament? That has nothing to do with if they came off the slave ship as Israelites or Jews or whatever. Nothing to do with that. And every time you bring up conversion, show and prove the converted people that came over and brought the culture. They didn't bring no culture, Bereen. That's the dagger. They didn't bring the culture. You r running around the Gullah trying to find people in the Gullah. Well, the Gullah did this, the Gullah did that. Yeah, show me the Hebraic culture in the Gullah. Show me the words. One show minute, me the bro. language. You can't show it, bro. You dead in the water. Once you, once you pull in that convert argument, I'm with you on that, saying that people could be converted. It's possible. And maybe I shouldn't be an absolutist. I agree with that because I'm just being, I'm being arrogant by saying that. But it's just to piss y'all off even more. Y'all can't even show one Negro that came off a slave ship that said, hey, I'm practicing this culture in Africa and I want to practice it here. You can't do it. Even Omar Ibn Said, where he says, show the Hebrew text. Show me the Hebrew text. You can't tell me nobody testifying out of that one source that said, hey, this guy was writing Hebrew. Produce the Hebrew he was writing. Produce the writing of Hebrew by Omar Ibn Said. Produce that. All right, Garfield. Um, more earthquake, yo. I appreciate brother Drew Jen. Y'all had an earthquake out there in California, 5.5. More, this is your last five minutes, and then you're gonna get 15 to tell why Garfield come on here and he ain't talk, talking crazy in your closing. Then I see his car back there, been holding on a long time, but I'm gonna let him come on and get 15 his thoughts on that. I know Yap Gang don't like that, and, and we got some Yap Gang that's just a Sherry that's come through this family that rocks out with us. If she want to touch the microphone, she's going to touch the microphone, too. I'm resetting your five minutes. After that, you're going to get that closing time, and Garfield getting that same closing time to see what he proved. Garfield proving it's an American-made thing. Remember, y'all, Garfield is attempting to prove it's an American-made thing. Um, Come on, more. You ready? I'll hit it as soon as I hear you start talking. First question. So, Garfield, how come... What makes Dr. Vince Bantu incorrect when he says that some Jews would have been on the slave ships as slaves? And he didn't provide, he doesn't provide the material culture. I just provided you when he makes the claim. How come he's incorrect? Good question. Let me get my microphone. Evidence. So I don't, I don't believe him. I need evidence. Just because he's Dr. Vince Bantu, I'm not appealing to no scholarship. I'm appealing to no scholarship. So I'm telling you, Dr. Bantu, if you're listening below, as a matter of fact, I'm going to inbox him later because I was supposed to do something with him this month. But um, I'm going to inbox him later. I say, I need evidence of that, bro. I'm not doing hmm. that. I need evidence. His evidence for the exact Islamic sources I cited for you. So what his makes him incorrect? Is, his evidence, the same reason why you're incorrect. He's saying it's possible. He's not saying 100% no, definitely happened. He didn't say it's possible. No, he said that, no, some came. It's going to be some, but it's a negligible number. It's not It's not a lot. Okay, well, I don't, I, I have not seen the culture here in America that these people carried over, and I'll continue to say that. Show me the material culture here. Why is it okay. every other, what, in all the well, minutes, my turn to ask the question. Hold on, 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 it's my question time, sir, so I'm, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to respond to the question I asked you, because you just got done answering. It is his, it is his, Garfield, we'll give him 30 seconds, go ahead. So, is praying three times a day facing the East a, a, a Christian practice that, 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 that was taught to the slaves? Um, no, not that, not, 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 that I, not that I know of. So what practice is, is that, is, what, what practice, what, what faith practice is that? Turn into the sun and praying. I know Islam does some praying to the Turning to the east and praying three times a day, like, like Daniel chapter 6, 10. Woo! More problem right now. Maybe my microphone. That don't, that don't make it, that don't make them a Jew. So, 
So how can how come the Muslims? Hold on. I mean, the Muslims got it from the Jews. I'm not ordered. Fuck the five minutes over. Start the five minutes over. My bad. Exactly. So how come how come the Muslims that were praying with amongst the gullet they were praying in Arabic on 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 prayer rugs and doing so, but they weren't doing it the way that the Christians were doing it three times a day in their in their way facing the east. Why was there a difference? Hold on a if second. They got it, if they got it from the Muslims. Hold on, say it again. So you're saying the Why Christians, was there a difference if they got it from the Muslims? Hold on. Listen, I'm asking a question. Repeat the whole thing over. Say it over again because I missed so it. So I'm asking. So amongst the gully, it's recorded in their in their own words, right? Again, in the in, in the book that I cited, right? You can go to Drums and Shadows and see this in their own words where they stipulate that the Muslims prayed using prayer rugs and speaking Arabic and prayer beads, etc. But the Christians were doing we're, 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 we're facing the east three times a day, etc. Right. So they're 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 not doing the same thing and they're doing it differently. Why is that? If, if, the, if the Christians got it from the Muslims. The Christians are praying three times a day to the east. That's what you're saying. Yeah, that's what they record over and over again in their own words. Well, I don't know why they prayed three times a day. It doesn't make it Hebraic. But remember, Christians also read the Old Testament. So if they read the Old Testament, maybe they got it from the Old Testament, brother. I'm just so saying. you're telling me that these slaves so that are reading the so Old Testament Christian. that are writing the New Testament in their own hand, in their own language, that ain't English, right? That they brought over from Africa, that they're reading this book and saying, you know what? I'm going to choose to practice this that no one else is doing. Why would they do that, Garfield? So you're saying that something that's in the Old Testament that Christians are doing, they're doing it because they're Jewish, because it's in the Old Testament. It don't. I thought Christians believe in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So what I said was, and please respond to what I said was, like earlier in this presentation, I stipulated, like when, when Jews converted to Christianity, you see the Ethiopian Christianity, just like Ephraim Isaac says in that same documentary you keep running from that you brought to the people, he says it's the most Jewish form of Christianity. I stipulated you see the same type of practice coming off the slave ship in the sense that the Christianity they practice, that they made themselves, looks Jewish. Just like what you said. They looked at that Bible and said, that practice right there I'm doing. All right, so the Christians praying three times a day as slaves under the Gullah. The Gullah is saying it, that is proof that they're following Jews. I thought, you see, is that's, that or that's is it not a Jewish practice from the Old Testament? Yes or no? That, but if it's a Jewish practice, it's also a Christian practice because at the end of the day, the Christians what are Christians, both, hold what on, Christians hold on, hold on, around hold on, the Gullah. Hold on, hold on, no, hold on, bro. It's my time. What Christians, I'm, 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 what I'm, Christians I'm, around the Gullah were doing that? I'll wait. I, it's not about Christians around the Gullah. The fact of the matter is that doesn't prove that they're Jews. Because it's once it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible, bro. It's the whole Bible. Is it? You can't tell me. I'm not saying in and of itself. I'm not saying in and of itself. It's a, I'm not saying in and of itself. Hey, you're talking over me in my time, bro. Don't does talk like source, Don't be source. Are you scared right now? Oh, man. Don't be scared. I can't Don't be scared of the more, bro. Step. So, again, I'm not saying that one claim in and of itself makes them Jews. I'm saying that that's an Old Testament practice. And I'm asking you, do you agree, yes or no? That the Jews pray to where? Pray to the east or to Jerusalem? Jerusalem would be east from America, yeah? I don't know. Maybe they're praying to us. Well, that would have been a bit You don't know that Jerusalem would be east from America? We're playing them kind of games right now. No, I don't, I'm not even familiar with that. But this is what I'm trying to figure you out. You don't know where the state of Israel is. Bro, I don't care. The point of the matter is whether it's east is Mecca, wherever. It doesn't you matter. can't even answer that right now. We're back. We bug dancing that hard, but we can't, we can't answer a basic question like where is Israel? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let you me didn't ask, answer one question yet, bro. Come on, bro. You striking I, I out. Can't, I can't answer because you keep cutting me off, beloved. I'm trying to answer, and as soon as I try to answer, you cut me off. Do you want me to answer or you don't want me to answer? Simple yes, no. Is praying three times a day facing Jerusalem an Old Testament practice? You know what? There are actually Christians who actually used to pray to the East at one point. So at the end of the day, there's a history. There's Which a history. one of those Christians owned American slaves? I'll wait. That's no, my but, but hold which on, one hold of those on, Christians going to American no, slaves, but, Garfield? The point, the point I'm bringing up is if Christians. I'm asking you a question, Garfield. You're talking if, through if, my if, time, Garfield. If, which if, one of those Christians that you just mentioned owned American slaves? I don't. How would I know that? What time period are you talking about? So you're acting. You're acting like what Christian crazy. groups are you talking about? From what hold time? On, period? Hold on, hold on, hold on, and hold when on, did they on, ever own American hold slaves, hold Garfield? Hold on, hold on. Let me answer the question. That's three. Can I answer the question? Yo, if praying to the East was once a Christian practice, you don't know who in the country. You're not answering Christian. the question. I'm what Christians have to practice? I'm and when did the they? When did those Christians own American slaves? I don't know. But you're acting like. It's and why are you bringing it up, bro? 
Because because we know in the early church, the straws, bro. That's what this is. No, we're not, no, we're not. I know in the early church you used to have people in the old testament that prayed certain ways. So now we're going back to this right here. I'm asking another question. Do you deny that Ephraim Isaac that you talked to on the phone, whom you have a recorded phone call from that you won't let out, that I may or anyway, that, that you won't let out stipulates that everything I just said. Do you do you do you the, the deny the fact that there's one scholar at the very least that agrees with what I'm saying? Possible. That's possible. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> okay. So do you agree that the source talking about the Jude, the, 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 the problem with the Judas Berbers that I talked about, I didn't say anything about Cesar Masa. I didn't say anything about Tuat. I didn't say anything about Morocco. I didn't say anything about Berbers. I mentioned Kamnuri, which is not which is not Morocco. I mentioned, I mentioned, I didn't even mention that from that source. From that source, I mentioned, I mentioned the concept of of, of Jews being amongst the the, the Wolof, the Mandinka, and the Futa people, and, and Futa and whatnot, and also that the fact that 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 that, that Leo Africana stipulates that they went from Jews to Christians to Muslims. Do you agree that that has nothing to do with what you brought up about the article? Okay, more. That's it. That's it right there. Um, yeah, go for Go ahead and answer. You got sixty seconds to answer that. Your five minutes. Then, boy, I want to hear more closing. I'm stopping. Right. Right. Go ahead. All right. All right, so let me. You want to answer that, or you want to go straight into your five? You just throw that one away because they talking bad about you right now. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. All right, let me let me say this. First and foremost, he acts like the the Christian praying three times a day, like it's not something that was done in Christian practice before. Now, if someone chooses to pray three times a day or turn to the east or whatever, it could be a tradition that they actually learn. Because remember. Yeah, from where? From Daniel and captivity praying towards Jerusalem? No, from where? no, Christians were doing it from early on. It's within the church fathers. They talked about it. But the issue is, though, if that's a tradition within Christianity, you can dictate if they should follow it or it was brought somewhere else or whatever. So, of course, if they borrow that, if they borrow that activity, that doesn't make the Gullah Jews. We know the Gullahs are not Jews. That would be nuts. So what, what, is, what is he ultimately saying, though, to you people? Is he saying the Gullah, Gullah Geechee is now Jews? They could have adopted a adopted a tradition from whoever their slave master. They, they had Jewish slave masters. You act like it wasn't Jewish slave masters here. This is why you could jump in and interrupt all you want and try to get an upper hand. But the truth of the matter is Jews were here, Christians were here, and if they're praying and they're using the same biblical text, who are you to make the decision who they got it from? Again, that's vague. Okay, I'm starting with five minutes now. I just gave you that 60 seconds just to answer Moore's last thing. Moore, you get get ready for your closing. Get ready for your closing. A lot of folk, a lot of folk, a lot of folk praying for your brother. Let's just put it that way. Oh, um, right, let's, 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 let's get it going. Let's get it going. I'm starting your five, just your last of the five minutes. And next time Moore touch that microphone, Moore's gonna um you're gonna question for five minutes. Next time you touch that microphone, it's his closing. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question, Moore. Within the diet, what was the diet like for the um the Gullah Geechee? Did they follow a Hebraic diet? That's for more. I'm asking a question. More. Did they follow a Hebraic diet? I don't want my mic is Hold on. There we go. Those are mute. Just some some mute yeah. Yes, but some of them did. So so like I like I stipulated so, in, some in, of them in, who? Some of them who? On, Why are you lying? You, you, you gonna let me answer the lying? question or no? Some of them who? Some of them who? The Hold no? on, give God Goff them right out. Go ahead. Like I stipulated, in the, like literally in the book and the page numbers that I cited uh, in Drums and Shadows, you literally have Gullah Geechee talking about they have the concept of unlucky foods. And some of them wouldn't eat rabbit. They wouldn't eat certain types of fish. And they wouldn't eat foods that were sacrificed to the voodoo, like in a voodoo manner or whatnot, right? Like a chicken or whatnot. That is well, 100% African. consistent. Well, that's African. What, what are you playing games? You know this is a rice coast group. They come, they deal with rice and greens, and they deal with food, food So and Okay, that. so that is that inconsistent that is, that with the dietary laws of the Bible? No, that's a lie. You're lying about... Is that inconsistent words. with the dietary the laws of the Bible? The killing of chicken? Come on. They serve gumbo and okra. The killing of chicken? No, 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 no. It was... No, 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 no. It was the killing of chickens done in a voodoo fashion and voodoo sacrifices. They would not eat the chicken. So hold on. Is that Hebraic? Not all of them, but some of them. No, again, not all of them. You're lying, again no. yeah, one hundred percent. Not eating food sacrificed to other gods, one hundred percent. You can't, you can't even lie. Good. So is a Jew allowed you, to eat food sacrificed to another god? Let me ask you a question. Do you have a source? Is a Jew of Omar? allowed? To, do you ahead. have Omar? Do you have Omar Ibn Said's um primary text of him writing in Hebrew? You claim he wrote Hebrew. Where's the primary? I never text claimed he wrote Hebrew. I said, I said he knew Hebrew. Oh, he knew Hebrew. What is your proof of that? I'll show it. 
What I cited, I cited, I cited that that someone that he went to church with stipulated Somebody that, that he spoke Hebrew. Stipulated. All right, okay. So let me ask you this then. So you have no other evidence out of somebody saying that he spoke Hebrew, so you can't prove it. All right, okay. Another yeah, yeah I, have no, I have nothing other than a first hand account. As far, you're correct. Yeah, as, you're correct. I have nothing as, other than a first hand right, account. Okay, as far as as far as um I have nothing other than a primary evidence that he spoke Hebrew. As, all right, okay, let's be honest. As far as the fuse is concerned, <laughs> don't the majority of the sources say it's Arabic than Hebrew? Or the 90% of the sources, do they say it's Arabic more than Hebrew? 90% of the sources that have reviewed the pews that we know unofficially from the Henry Louis Gates documentary, your brother Abu, all the people that have ever spoken about the pews. Don't 90% of them or 99%, I'm saying 99% say that it's Arabic on the pews. No, because again, and again, most, you have to understand this. Most people okay, who have seen the you pews, said no. you you're going to no. let me you answer the no. question. You said you're no. Let me you answer the no. question. You said no. You said no. Let me answer the question. No, I'm going to do you like you. Let me answer the question. I'm going to do you like you. You're like you going to let now. me answer the question. Uh, everybody, you can talk everybody, 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 everybody knows. So the people who reviewed the pews were only reviewing one picture of a pew at a time. They weren't reviewing all the pictures of the pews. Not not everybody who saw the pews got to see the pews that would have had would have had the Hebrew. How many people said it was Hebrew? The one, the claim that I'm talking about, one, and the one person you said. There you, you go. That, you know what? Thank you, bro. Are you, gonna draw, are you gonna draw a conclusion? The same a one? I'm glad you said one person. Pew? Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, who now, else you looked at the same You can't brew, you can't. All right, let me ask you a question. Did the drumming and the, the, the um the celebrations that the gullah do, is it Hebrew? All the celebrations that they do, the culture that they do, the juju, the witchcraft, is that a part of the Hebrew culture? The witchcraft, no, but the drumming. All right, what about what about what about, what about what about what about the special individuals, the root doctor, the doctor buzzard, who can provide protection against witchcraft? Is that a part of the Hebrew culture? Uh, did I ever claim it was? All right. So that West African practice of wearing a protective amulet called the sebe or the grigri, is that a part of the Hebrew culture? No, that's more so like Sufi Islamic so, culture. So, 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 so basically, ladies and gentlemen, you're saying because they prayed three times, they took something from the Hebrews, but everything else that they did had nothing to do with the Hebrew culture. All right, now move Jeez, on. Everything else uh, that they let did. me ask you a question: Is is so are you saying that are you is, saying is the that the were a monolithic? Culture? Is the bar is the Barbary states North Africa? It's not Madagascar. Is it? But is the Barbary states North? He's Africa? not from the Barbary states. Like that's where they took him from. He's not from the Barbary states. He's I from Madagascar. He's not, but, he, but they took him from so, the Barbary okay, states. So what's your problem? All right, all right. Now, the Morris Zion Temple. Well, he's not from he, the Barbary states. He's from Madagascar, like now, I said. The, rab the rabbi that started the Morris Zion Temple, did he, did, was he come, did he come off the slave ship practicing Hebrew? Practicing the he, Hebrew culture? It's impossible to be alive in 1890. Well, why did you Why did you bring him up then? What's the purpose of bringing him up? That's stupid. because you were talking about it. But you you said that there was no Jews who recognized Messianic Judaism, like what we're talking about. And literally, the first African Jewish congregation proved you 100 percent wrong on your face. That's why I brought. Okay, it. let me ask you a question: Were there Jewish slaves in the slave masters in the South? Say that one more time. Were there Jewish slave masters in the South? Yeah, 100. percent all right, were the Gullah in the South? Yes, they were. So isn't it possible that the Gullah, just like how they would adopt Christianity and Africanize it, isn't it possible that they, a Jewish slave master had a Gullah's person and they practice a Jewish tradition? Yes or no? No, because it's on record that they, that oh, again, okay. all scholars, okay. people, again, all yeah, the scholars stipulate that this this is something that they made up them that they did themselves that they did not learn right. from. Ult them. Ultimately, ultimately, if you got, if you got, if you got something to the contrary, I'd love to see it. Otherwise, you just ultimately, reach it. Ultimately, I have a lot on the contrary regarding the goal. I have a lot of stuff on the. Then, that then how come you didn't provide? Let me it. say this. Let me say. Let me say this right now. No, because then how come you didn't provide it? This is a gotcha moment. This is a gotcha moment right now. You just presented this stuff and I'm responding. But let me ask you this: the last thing. Do you have evidence of anyone in the Americas speaking a Judea? African, Judea, African language at all. Do you have any evidence of that? Anybody in the Americas? Yep. yep. Came off the all right, that's time, but, but he, could answer, he could answer that. Let him answer, answer, answer that. So if you look into to Dr. Renzo Dow, Dow Turner's work uh, uh, on the Gullah, the Gullah language where he records over 4,000 words, um, amongst those are, are Semitic words um, that are that are that are uh, Arabic, but also are, are universal to Hebrew and whatnot. Words like for, for prophet, words for like Moses, words for words for like Mary, words for uh, 
certain things that are universal in Hebrew and Arabic or whatnot. So again, these people, it's very consistent with what I'm talking about. People who, who, uh, who were Jews who went from being to Christians and went to being Muslims or whatnot, right? So they're finding their repost in the Arabic language or whatnot, where you're finding neutrality with Hebrew. Hey, hey, Marine, thank you for your time, bro. I mean, that was just crazy a while ago. But anyway, what's the next step? All right, next step is he gonna have his he's gonna have his um closing time. More you ready or you like Garfield go first? What and what why he proved that he believed he won based on the evidence that he set forth and where you like you want him no, to go? Let him go, let him go, let him go. No, go let Garfield go. Uh, real I'll estate, go I got I drunk, I, drunk, I drunk a lot of water. I gotta go to the can right quick. Okay, okay. Um Come on, Ishikar, come to the microphone it's, it, while, while they're taking a break. If somebody want to get a water break, somebody else in the audience want to go to the bathroom. I mute myself. I'm walking away, but I can hear you. What are we doing, man? <clears throat> go ahead, you what we doing? Oh, man. I wanted to let them get a five-minute discourse before I gave my input. Um, oh, you want to wait till after the closing? To, to man, I, I got a lot to say, man. There's All right, hold on, Miss. Oh, all right, all right, hold on then. Who's this, Miss Diane? Come to the microphone. I hope this ain't. Who's this? You're muted. I want to say a very lovely discussion, by the way. Okay. Marine, you 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 got a show full of mendacity, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Mendacity and mendacity, brother. That's all. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on man. Let me hear this. Let me hear this, Miss Diane. Listen, y'all. Miss the most excellent. Let me do my Go ahead. You wanted to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say I love the dialogue between the brother and, um, you know, we need to have both sides of the argument, and that's important. But the one thing that we cannot forget is that Israel is um, showing who she is in all the places where she is in standing. So I would love to hear the closing argument. Okay, it's coming up. It's coming up a couple of minutes. Let me play this. Let me play this last thing whilst more and them getting settled. And then we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna go right in. Where Aunt at right now? Where Aunt? At? Let me play Aunt Girl real quick. Some 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 culture. Tell me if this culture, this Bible, this rabbis, this dumb folk. Who this right here? Please. That's a real Jew. Ask me a question that you like. I dress like this all the time when I'm alone in the house. Oh. And it's just me and my husband. Uh oh, wait a minute. What my thing doing? Hey, hey, I always tell y'all that the Israelis, Ashkenazi, Sephardis, they have a levitine root. They real Jews. Like, no, hold on, Jews? hold on a minute. Hold on. Let me start over. No, hold on. You, you chop it up after as soon as they finish. And then and, and he said that's a real Jew. I'm mute myself. When I'm alone in the house, when it's just me and my husband, and there's good reason why. First reason that I always dress modestly, even when I'm all alone, is so that my children can see how much I value dressing properly, even when nobody is around. It sends a good message to my kids and tells them that we are Tselem Elohim, which means we're created in the image of God, and therefore I hold myself to a high standard. The second reason is that in Judaism, we make blessings on everything. For every first bite, or first drink of something that a Jewish person eats, we make a blessing. My husband learned that according to Jewish law, there are areas of a woman's body designated as erva, including her hair. Erva means nakedness. He learned that a man is not allowed to cite a blessing in front of his wife's hair if it is uncovered. So therefore it's like really annoying for him to have to tell me every single time he takes a bite of something or drink something that I have to go upstairs and put a hair cover on. It's just easier for me to cover my hair all the time and to dress modestly all the time. Brian, I'm glad you brought that up. Because oh. some of these ladies in this chat right now, the avatar got their heads uncovered. And when we were trying to pray, and, and, I know they'll put their cover head covers on when we pray. I know they don't. They see, distracting you, Dunamis. You can't see them. They distracting you, Dunamis. My spirit bears witness. See, see, Bree, you you talk about the apron that Adam wore, but you don't talk about the head scarf that, that God gave Eve. You know, two point nine is two point nine. If two point nine messing your mind up, I don't know what thirty five percent gonna do. 
35%. I don't know what 35% going to do. Hold on, dude. Ms. Moore, you ready? I want y'all to know before we even get yeah. into it, I respect both of y'all. I really appreciate it. I'm going to look after your um after after it's your car go. I'm gonna and, and Dunamis talk. I'm gonna let a few other people up to share their to share their thoughts on what they thought about the whole thing. We got nine hours in, y'all. But go ahead, more. Let me set it. You almost ready, brother? You good? Oh, he pulling up the screen for his last twenty. All right, you good? You, you I can't hear you now. I want to make sure. I want you to get every second, every second of your thing. Yeah, I'm straight. All right, you comfortable? All right, he said he good. Come on. Whenever you ready just, to go, you can begin. There we go. Slideshow. Yeah. I don't know why it's being slow. But yeah, I, I enjoyed this talk very much, this dialogue very much. Shout out to Garfield for having it. Um, my joint is freezing. No problem. Shout out to, 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 to Brother Brand for letting us have this dialogue. Man, am I joint doing on the show right now? Is it sharing or no? Yeah, it's going to share. It's blown up. Well, I'll just and since we're I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I don't know y'all. I'm just joking. <laughs> you got you got to forgive him. He's like me. He got to go back and watch seven times. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, yeah, my joint. I don't know why my joint's doing this, but. Oh, well, I'm going to run through it. So the, the basic concept was this, right? Like I said at the outset, I don't have to provide any proof that that, that Garfield doesn't have to provide in terms of how he shows connection to people, right? Uh, in terms of Africans, et cetera. And I, I also stipulated I didn't have to show any connection beyond what other Jewish populations have to show, i.e. they show connection back to people with an oral history to Judaism or being Israelites, et cetera. Um, and then they also try to show maybe genetic connection to the Levant, maybe because they don't, they, no one can prove um, being, being Jacob at the moment, right? And so... And so, oh, let's see if it wants to work. It's going super slow, but I'll leave it there. Oh, okay, here we go. It'll let me do it. There we go. And so the burden of proof that that, that Garfield showed about his connection to Africa was this is how he knows he connects to a certain part of Africa, right? He gave me a couple of stories. He gave me some food. He gave me a single word. He gave me a God. He gave me a person that fought in the God's name, et cetera. Whatnot, right. And so um, I said the same thing. I'm going to connect myself to a certain part of Africa. Right. I did the same exact thing. Now, what I also did on top of that was I went and showed a connection coming back from Africa where I got people who connect to these areas here that I'm showing right here. That part that are part of this Gullah culture that I'm talking about. Right. That have a history of being Jews, not all of them, some of them have a history of being Jews, Christians, and Muslims, being converted to all three, like being converted from Jews to Christians to Muslims and whatnot, right? And so and so I showed you that there's people that 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 uh that, that come from around the Wolof, from around the Fulani, and from around around the, the, the Mandinka that had Jews amongst them. And these are people who were taken on the slave ships. I showed you connection to Hebrew and the Wolof language. I specifically was drawing a through line with these people like the Wolof, et cetera. Right? So you can see exactly what it was. He asked a question, the fantastic question. Where on this map are you? Now, this is a legit question. He should be asking this question and people should be giving him answers. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction. I'm sorry. Hold up. He's asking a great question and people should be giving him answers. But this is why I asked the question, is he a skeptic or is he a cynic? Because when he asked the question, like, I'm going to show you where, I, where where these people are in this, in this situation. right? Here. And what did I show you? I emphatically showed you these, these different migrations of people coming in via the sources of West Africa itself and showing you these populations in Mauritania, in Mali, in Guinea, in Senegal, in the Gambia, et cetera, in Guinea-Bissau and all that. And these are, again, these are people who were taken in the slave trade. Now, again, the argument isn't everybody you can understand the verboseness if, if, he, if he wants to reject the claim of everybody. Like I said earlier, I can understand in dealing with the conscious community where you're, where you're being told that everybody's Egyptian or everybody's a more everybody's is like you're going to reject all that because we have different connections. But at the same point in time, this is where we get the special pleading coming in. 
because he's re- he's going to the extreme and saying, well, none can be even when there's overwhelming evidence that some could be. Like if you wanted to be skeptical, like, you know what, I see what you're saying, but I still want to look into it a little bit more. I, I can understand that. Right. But he's saying flat out. No, 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 I won't accept. And that's that's the concept of a, of, of a cynic or whatnot. No matter what you say, they're not going to accept the information. And this is why I asked a very poignant question. How why is it that when 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 Dr. Vince Bantu, when he says that there's some Jews that came off the slave ships, maybe not a lot, but some Jews. Why is he wrong when he says so? And he's just citing Islamic sources. I cited Islamic sources and gave you material culture on both sides of the water. Fam. I gave you the concept of people uh, coming off the slave ship themselves from these places that I'm talking about, saying that they practice the tithe, excuse me, the tithe in West Africa where they were at. I showed you these same people that said they were practicing the tithe, being able to speak Hebrew and Arabic. I, show, I showed you uh, groups of people that they're connected to. Again, the, 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 the Islamic people in, in Futa Toro, et cetera, they were part of the Tarot Bay clerisy where there's multiple groups of gr- tribes. So again, it's the Wolof, it's the Fulani, it's the Mandinka, it's the Hausa, and it's the Torek all together in one clerisy. So again, the brother who's Fulani is also connected to the to the Mandin- to, to the Wolof brother whatnot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The, one, the, the, the Fulani brother speaking Hebrew is connected to the Wolof brother who has Hebrew in his, in, in his language or whatnot. And so this this kind of stuff can't be denied. This is nothing to sneeze at. So when I have the Islamic sources plus the material culture, like the brother obviously couldn't answer the question about about the is is the the the, the praying three times a day towards Jerusalem is that a, a Old Testament practice? He couldn't acknowledge it because obviously he that that's what it is. And he couldn't answer the question: it, What Christian group would have taught them this? Were, were there other Christian groups? One hundred percent. There were other Christian groups doing that. And why is this important? And why did I show the other Islamic sources talking about the Christian groups in West Africa? Because like when I sat down with Dr. Vince Bantu, the Christian groups that came to West Africa came from East Africa. And when I when I go to the amongst the Ethiopian Christians who, again, have the most Jewish form of Christianity out there, they stand, bow and prostrate when they pray. But did they own American slaves? No, they didn't, obviously. And you can't show me any other group of people who did that, who did own American slaves. And that's the whole point. If you can, you can you look at the information skeptically, but realistically, realistically, you have to say, OK, this couldn't have come from an outside source if no one else outside of them had this practice. That's being an honest skeptic. Nothing wrong with that. But when you're a dishonest skeptic, now you're a cynic. Now you're just playing a bad guy on TV. I got no issue with that, but that's not how you move a conversation forward. That's not how you move a, a, a people forward. That's not how you move information forward. So I asked you to honestly deal with the sources that I brought up, and you didn't do it. I brought up the I brought up the sources in uh, the problem with with with, with Judas Berbers talking about this stuff that had nothing to do with the stuff that you were talking about. You're sitting there talking about a whole other country and a whole other group of people that have nothing to do with the area that I'm talking about in any way, shape, or form. There could be an issue. There could be all kinds of issues with Judas Berbers. That has nothing to do with the people I'm talking about. I'm talking. I was talking about the Wolof. I was talking about the Fulani. I was talking about the Mandinka, etc. I was talking about the Gaul Jews that were amongst them that were called Black Jews, etc. Who knew nothing about the synagogues. Who knew nothing about the ways of other Jews. Again, again, uh, this whole thing about you got to watch out for for Arabic sources, fam. This is why I brought up. Valentin Fernandez, you're talking about these. You're talking about these 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 Portuguese people coming into these areas. These like these these Iberian people coming into these areas, saying that these people here, these Jews don't know anything about our practices. So again, this practice amongst the wall of the practice amongst what amongst the flag, they're not getting it from outside sources like that, fam. They're not getting it from from the European slave master or from, or from the the Jewish slave master or from the the Luso Africans. That again, and this is why I brought up Omar Ibn Said. If I would love to see you cite in anywhere in his manuscript that he wrote with his own hand that he got his Hebrew or anything like that from a Luso African. I'm sorry you deny the firsthand account of a church member that he went to church with who said it was he was helpful because he could help them break down and understand the Hebrew. But that's a firsthand account. A first-hand account. That's nothing to sneeze at. I brought up the fact that they practice first fruits, or uh, the, the, the first fruits concept, or first harvest feast, and whatnot. 
again, you can't deny that that's, and also subsequent crop suppers. I cited them talking about it in their own books or whatnot, right? The page numbers or whatnot. That's the goal of people saying it themselves. Again, you can't deny that the first fruits festival is in fact something in line with the Old Testament. You can't deny the fact that the way that they do, again, the, the way they do their circular procession, their, 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 their ring shout, again, different people do that for different reasons in different parts of Africa. And there's and I don't deny that. I do not claim anybody's a monolith. The Gullah are not a monolith. They're a mixture of over 20, 30 different tribes or whatnot. That's that's recorded in their language. I'm saying some people out of that 30 had these practices. And you can't you can't reject the sum. You can't reject the sum because you're not willing to say all. Oh, that's fallacious. That's fallacious. How much time do I have left? I'm going to keep on rocking so they tell me to stop then. So on top of that, what I also brought out was the fact and something I really want people to understand is the information I brought out about the Moorish Zionist temple. The Moorish Zionist temple is important to understand because it is a complete contrary story to this BHI movement. The people who began the BHI movement were rejected from the Moorish Zionist temple. The Moorish Zionist temple was not racist. The Moorish Zionist temple was not anti-Semitic. In fact, they said that all the other Jews of the world were their brethren from, from China to Ethiopia to Europe, etc. That's what that's why their rabbi Mordecai Herman is literally painted on the walls of Jerusalem with respect because he's not a BHI. He's not anti-Semitic. And again, their form of Judaism, it smacks exactly of what you see. Again, ortho, ortho, again, he was an ordained rabbi. Rabbi Richard was an ordained rabbi, ordaining his own rabbis and would not make these BHI people rabbis. But when he made people rabbis, they were upholding a tradition that stipulated the same thing you see in the Old Te or in the New Testament, in the first century uh, Christians or whatnot, the first century church, to where you had Jews and Gentiles following Jesus and doing so in a slightly different way, to where some people might have been eating pork, might have been getting down on the pork sandwich or whatnot, and some people might have been keeping it kosher. There's nothing outside of the text. There's nothing wrong with that in terms of what the text stipulates. And again, if that's nothing wrong, there's nothing that, that goes against the concept of that. And the people in West Africa be going from being Jews to Christians to Muslims as well. So this this needs to be really well understood. This like Romani out form of Judaism that my man Rube represents. Shout out to Rube, our resident rabbi in Yap or whatnot. He goes back to this first century concept. We I, we learned about this from a from a from a Western European brother who's Yap himself, who says he comes from these same people comes from these same people and breaks down the concept. No, it's okay to reach out from, from, from the Torah to different people in different ways or whatnot. It's okay if they, if they need to be Christian about it. It's okay if some people need to be a little bit Muslim with it. There are, there is forms of, of, of Judaism that do do that kind of stuff. And so again, there's an important thing to understand with that, 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 that before you see the BHI taken off, you see the very first African congregation of Jewry in this country, taking Jews from Egypt, from Ethiopia, from Yemen, to Morocco, Caribbean Jews, etc., And also Europeans and whatnot. They had no issue taking white people because it wasn't a racist thing. And that's not how this gets down. And last but not least, the brother keeps wanting to obfuscate the point. I said at the very beginning of this, I am not making the claim like the BHI do that I'm a, I'm a bloodline descendant of Jacob and that no one else can be, etc. right? And so he wants to obviously at the point like, well, I'm not talking about about this. You're talking about converts. No, I keep saying this like every other Jewish group out there. Like every other Jewish group out there, like you heard uh, uh, Abu talk about the majority, the large majority of like Ashkenazi can't be can't be bloodline descendants of, of, of Jacob because they have multiple different apple groups. I'm saying that would apply in any other Jewish group that you find that you're going to find a small group that might go back to. To, 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 to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but a large group is not going to. Just like you see with the Lemba with 14 different haplogroups, groups, just like you see with the with with the with the with the Ashkenazi with a bunch of haplogroups, groups, just like you see with the Sephardic with a bunch of haplogroups, groups, just like you see with the Ethiopian Jews having a bunch of haplogroups, groups, like he admitted. So I have no issue with the concept of converts or whatnot. I have, but at the same point in time, you can't deny that again. I'm saying that some are going to go back to the bloodline, just like any other group. And if they don't, how do you get the conversion? Five minutes more.
Let me see. What else did I not, did I not address? So I'm going to go back to his fallacies right quick in terms of in terms of the arguments that he that he was talking about in terms of what I was saying, because, again, what you what unfortunately what we didn't see is we didn't see Garth would actually address my 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 my, my arguments. We didn't see him actually address the sources that I went through. What we saw was a bunch of bloviating, unfortunately. But again, I did not quote Idrisi from the problem of the Judaized Berbers. I quoted Valentin Fernandez. Again, he's not a Muslim, not an Arab. He's, he's coming from the. He's coming from the like, like like a Latin source base in terms of being a source or whatnot. And so you can't apply what you're saying about the Judas Berbers to what he was saying, right? Again, he was talking about the Google Jews being among the Wolof, the Mandink, and the Fulani. I made no Berber Jew claim. What you witnessed him do was called a straw man fallacy and not address the point. Unfortunately, the brother didn't deal with the point. I wish we, we I wish he would have went straight up with it. The name of the town and the community was named again with the, the Bani Israel. He keeps denying that I showed you. I showed you this over and over again. It was not the people that was named after the dream. It was the town that was named after the dream. The source says that they were a thriving Jewish community. Fallacy of omission. One more time. For whatever reason, he doesn't want to deal with his own sources. This is why I brought them up. Yes, Garfield, I studied your sources. I brought up your sources so you couldn't run from them. I could have brought this stuff up from other stuff, but I brought it up from your sources on purpose. And then I brought up sources I know you didn't know about, like this stuff about Omar Ibn Said. He spoke again. He dealt with Hebrew and Arabic. He again. He wrote a. He wrote his own biography in his own hand and never mentions Luso Africans or learning Hebrew from Jewish merchants or anything of that sort. What 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 Garfield's doing at that juncture is an argument from silence. He doesn't have any proof of anything. He's just making a claim. Well, what if? Well, what if? What if? We're talking about what about isn't fam? That's a whole. That's a whole fallacy in and of itself. Again, the Billy Simons concept, right? He brought up the fact that the guy he was emailing was the Billy Scott Simon scholar, the top guy. And that guy in the email, which is why I showed it, said that the Lemba DNA is basically worth another look. That's me paraphrasing what I, but he brings up the fact that the Lemba DNA it can make it legitimate potentially. And again, like I said, Madagascar is not in North Africa because he's from Madagascar. You kept saying he's from North Africa. Again, that's not, there's no, there's nothing wrong about me clarifying that. Right. And again, I'm not wrong. You pretending like I am. And that's a whole red herring fam. A whole red herring fallacy. I wish there wasn't so many fallacies stacking up. We could build a house with these fallacies, bro. The Ghana Empire was in the Western Sahel. This is something he didn't touch on later, but again, he he keeps doing, it and he he brought it up in the middle of this whole thing where he tried to front like the Ghana Empire was where current Ghana is, and that's not where it was at. It was in the Western Sahel in Mali and in, in, in Burkina Faso, etc. Again, another fallacious argument. I and I cannot stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough. This point about the Moorish Zionist temple and how it's 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 a different birth of a different belief system than than than, than this BHI thing. I can't stress how important it is to understand how 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 this affects how people can move in this country. If you don't want to be connected to this BHI thing, but you but you feel like you're connected to, to people who came off the slave ships who did practice the tradition and you want to go back to that and do so in a righteous way. There's a, there's a format you can go back and look at. Like, how did other people do it? How did how did how did the righteous people who rejected the BHI thing do it? And the Moorish Zionist Temple is a fantastic template to go look at because again, they weren't racist, they weren't anti uh, anti-Semitic in any way, shape, or form. In fact, they were they had their own form of Zionism to where even Abu recognizes they may have affected the way that that that, that modern Jews look at Ethiopian Jews and incorporated them in, in, into Jews. So again, they were about working with world jewelry. They were not about working against it. They saw themselves as part of the whole, not separate from, but 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 had the right to do their own tradition their way. They practice all the Jewish holidays their way. And there's nothing wrong with that. And Rabbi Demota of, of the Obadiah Alliance says that's the way to go about it. If you're not going to go back to someone like the Eboards or like the Lemba, et cetera, this is the way to go about it. And there's a template for such. And it's not the BHI way. It's not making the extreme claims based off of no evidence. It's not making the extreme claims based off of emotion, et cetera, like we're seeing the brother do here. Unfortunately, all his extreme claims come from the fact that if he has to accept some, that means he got to change his whole argument or whatnot. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That's what honest scholars do. Do you think the Christians were saying that there's some Israelites coming off the slave ships a couple years ago? No. There were people doing a lot of hard work behind the scenes to get them to change their tune and whatnot. 
And thank God they're changing the tune because you know what? Now we get to see something that's very unique that people aren't talking about. People are talking about like, OK, my mother's people, the people who come from 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 North Africa and 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 and, and, and Sephardi and whatnot that, that are coming to their understanding. Like, oh, man, I thought I was I was I was Spanish or Mexican, whatever. But, you know, I really like like Kobe. I got I got, I got Sephardic Jewish backgrounds and whatnot. Right. Well, the same thing as the people coming off the slave ships. There's a pop like if the scrolls are correct, fam. We're gonna we're gonna see the north, south, east, and west coming uh, coming out of this thing, right? We're gonna see Jews going to the north, east, and west, and we're, we're we're talking about a legitimate, actual Jewish population that was in West Africa that should not be overlooked. And what's important about this is it could be a it could be a population that's bigger. I'm not saying it's the biggest population in the world, but it could be bigger than the population that was expelled from Spain and Portugal. That means it's significant. It should be understood and it should be studied and it shouldn't be scoffed at. And if someone brings this level of material culture on top of the th type of claims from from uh, from uh, Islamic sources like 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 Dr. Isvanti provides and whatnot. I mean, fam, if you're scoffing at that, then again, you're definitely being a cynic. You're not being a skeptic. And I can't take that serious in any way, shape or form. And again, I, I appreciate you for your time. I appreciate your platform and I appreciate the people for listening. Thank you so much, Mo. I appreciate it. Um, Garfield, I'm going to start over. You ready, or you want? You need a couple of seconds. Um, I need one second. Let's go. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me get this thing straightened out. Um, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. All right, all right, all right. Oh, you go. Hit it. Yeah. Um, peace and love to Mo. Thank you for this conversation, this bill. Um, I already won, and I'm gonna tell you why. No Lenin Lenin descent has been shown. He claims that, oh, you, you're talking about conversion. I'm going to tell you why that's a major, major problem. It's a major problem because you claim that the people in the Gullah Geechee was praying three times a day. Actually, somebody actually just sent me a source showing that, yes, some of the, the guys that were practicing Islam did pray three times a day to the East, not always at five times. So if you want to, I could email that source to you. But also the Pentecostal faith church used to also pray three times a day to the East. All right. And that's and, and it's called an Eastern Orthodox Christian practice. But just the fact that you would use that and don't have any other evidence to back up. And, and what I mean, any other evidence from the Gullah, because people in the chat who are Gullah, like my brother that's posting, they're laughing at you because you're saying first fruits. This other brother is saying Kumbaya 101. Now, first fruits it can be described in every many different ways. But what about the Exodus tradition? What about Passover? What about Sukkot? What about Yom Kippur? What about Rosh Hashanah? What about speaking in a Hebrew language or dialect? What about reading Hebrew? Where are all those sentiments that would attach a culture to the people? Because you can't produce that. You're going to find one little thing with the Gullah. Oh, the Gullah did this, so they must be Hebrew. You sound just like the BHI folks. They find one little thing. So everybody in America is a Hebrew because of one thing. That's a bad argument, bro. You got to look at the overall culture. You yourself is a Gullah. You, 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 you violate your own culture, bro. And then on top of it, I stress the whole thing about um, the, um, the E1B1A carriers mainly. The E1B1A carriers mainly are not the main people that's a part of the culture. And it's obvious the Sub-Saharan Africans are not. And that's why I brought up the E1B1A earlier. Now, with the Wolof Mandigo, and you're showing that they had some connection as far as influential, as far as Hebraic culture, and they were practicing in West Africa. The reason why I brought up the article, bro, this article here, I'm going to put the article back up on the screen so people could actually see the article. And the reason why it's important, because I had to read the conclusion. The conclusion doesn't agree with you. It doesn't. And that's why reading it is important. Finally, let it be noted that all the known movements, all of them, bro, you're talking about conversion. And I don't see how you don't know this is a dagger to your whole conversation, bringing it up. And this is a summary of the entire article. That's why I read the first page and the last page. I didn't want to read the whole thing. Finally, let it be noted that of all the known movements, all the known movements, of conversion to Judaism and instances of Judaizing, those connected with the Berbers and the Sudanese in Africa are the least authenticated. Whatever has been written on them is extremely questionable. Again, another source that you use with a question sign. So you have not proven anything, no unambiguous source you have brought so far. The Gullah stuff with the three days in the East, that's easily solved. 
This right here about talking about Hernandez or Fernandez, whatever his name is, is easily solved. You now have to look at yourself and say, why would I use this in a debate if it's not definite? Why bring up the pews? There's so much question about the pews. It's a, still another question sign. You didn't prove anything. Ibn Said, you said, somebody said he spoke Hebrew. That's a first-hand account. I don't know. We don't know. It's hearsay, and we can't prove it. In all his writings, he never wrote anything Hebrew. If he was writing and reading Hebrew, why he ain't writing nothing Hebrew to all them damn books that he wrote? So how are you going to come to the conclusion like, yo, this must be true, man, because you know what? I'm into the Hebrew doctrine, and, you know, let me just use this as an argument, like a gotcha moment. That is not scholarship. You need, in your Bible, it talks about having two and three witnesses. What is your witness? You ain't got no witness, but this one lady that said so. We don't know if it's true. Again, the gull of first fruits. Let me re repeat this part, this whole argument. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're talking about a, a, a culture as far as Hebraic culture, even if you don't believe and you were converted, you know the Passover is the most important thing. Then Sukkot, then Rosh Hashanah, then Yom Kippur, and then repeating in Deuteronomy, when it's a hero, Israel, there's only one God, but Yahweh or whatever. Then what about Purim or Hanukkah? At least show me some stuff at Christmas time. Like, yeah, this is what we do with candles. Where is that in the Gullah culture? Where is Purim? Where is none of this stuff that they should have brought as converts over, bro? You see, the problem is the material culture has not been proven. I am going to say, yeah, I got to go back and look at some stuff and try to see where he's coming from with this as far as within Africa. But those specific people you're talking about in Africa may have not even gone on the slave ships. You don't know that for a fact, bro. You can't trace it back to a tribe. You ain't bring up slave voyages and say, yeah, this is the era that these people came from and they came on the ships. This is 641 of them. It's a possibility. Okay, fine. Show and prove the culture when they got off the boat. You got to be fighting. Yo, this lady around the corner had said something that this guy spoke Hebrew and this guy around the corner, they prayed three times to the east. Where is the material culture? Where is it? This is why I'm reading out the Passover, the Sukkot, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, reading Hebrew, writing Hebrew, speaking about it. Look at Walkowski. Walkowski could have faked the funk. He was reading Hebrew, claiming he was dumb, deaf, dumb and deaf, and he could write the Hebrew. And some places he read the Hebrew. But where, where is that? Where is that in the slave? Where is that from the people that you're referring to? And also, ladies and gentlemen, were these people, were they, well, I won't talk about circumcision because that would have to be a leadership in, in, in Gullah Geechee culture. When they were independent, were they circumcising on the eighth day? Were they doing that? What about the diet that they followed? Their diet is one of the most damaging things against what he's saying. They had fufu and they were jollof rice and all this stuff that they were eating. All these foods that are against the law. What about Sabbath and the holy days? Show me that. At least that's basic. Show me these people practicing the Sabbath. And also, which God are they claiming? If the Gullah Geechee people are praying to the east, that specific guy, where is he calling on Yah? You can't show that. That's the dagger. You can't show that. Even if they don't remember nothing, Bereen, at least they're going to remember the God that they worship. And the Gullah Geechee was into their religion and they were showing all type of material culture from Africa. How is it that all these people, the Akan, the Igbos remembering their secret society, the Ekpe, in Haiti, in Cuba, in Jamaica, in America, they're remembering all of that. The Yoruba, the Yoruba words we see in the African-American culture. How, again, it goes back to linguistic family. Where is the Judea African? Show me that in the Americas that they're practicing Judea and African. They're speaking the culture and all these words that they're using. No. When we look at the Africanisms book, it talks about how the Yoruba words, the Igbo words, it's talking about those words. It don't talk about no, no words from, from Am, what you call it, from no Hebrew words. It don't talk about none of that. We might see some Arabic within the culture, but we're not talking about no Hebrew. Bro, you're begging the question, bro. The whole time. You have not proven anything. Everything is easily done away with. Gola with the first roots. That's like the Hebrew guy said, yo, kumbaya, Garfield. I'm glad you ain't use that. You ain't that crazy. But again, the three days a week is attached to Islam or to the Pentecostal church. And of course, some Pentecostal church is big time. That's the root to the Hebrewism culture in um, black Hebrewism here anyway. I want to say to everybody, man, think for a second. If you are, if you are Hebraic in West Africa, I'm going to use 1493 line. Did they catch divine amnesia? Did these Africans, and by the way, too, I want to say to the brother, I applaud you 
for saying that these people are Africans and, and, and pushing a converting movement. Because now you're going to be more hated than me. Because now you're telling these Israelites here in America that they're Hamites. So I ain't calling them no Hamites. That's you. <laughs> but um, I want to say this, man. As far as linguistics, I think I won that conversation about a Judea African language or a Judeo African American language. I don't think there's anyone who could really say that the um African Americans, I'm gonna use America alone. I'm not even gonna talk about Jamaica, but in America, African Americans, you could say that you don't see a major influence from Hebraic culture within as far as linguistically speaking. Genetics wise, is mostly sub-Saharan Africans, mostly carriers of E1, B1A who I don't think are attached to Jews. Yeah, they are attached to the 3 to the 5%, but they're not attached as far as the people who are the root of the people. I know Yashub going to disagree with me, so I'm ready for that. Um, so we have linguistics, we have genetics, we have a history. We have a history of Africans may have been converted. According to this article, it said we got to take it with a grain of salt. They're not really authenticated, and they're extremely questionable. His source. He used my source and I used back the same source to show him that he's wrong because he don't want to show this part. He don't want to show the conclusion of the person that did the article. You see, that's how I'm being genuine. I'm not hiding anything. All right. Then that's history. As far as anthropology, as far as movement from crossing over on the slave ships. I don't know, bro. I don't know, Bereen. But did this brother really show you? Think for a second. I'm asking everybody in the audience. Did he prove that the people that came off the ship were practicing a Hebraic culture? He said some. Okay, what amount? 20, 30, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000? Where? If that's the case, you would have found these people worshiping Yah, worshiping, following Passover, Yom Kippur, all these different things. All these maroon communities, over 5,000 of them. Hold up, let me show y'all this right now. Over 5,000 different communities. It's right here. This is the article from Brazil, Africa Relations. They see the Prime Minister, President. And then look at look at look at look right here. Under the decree 4887 of 2003, maroon communities are ethnic ethnic racial groups according to criteria. And look at this. Other sources, however, estimate there are about 5,000 communities. So you're telling me not one of them said nothing Hebraic? They are free. They are free to practice what they want. They're following Orisha and following the Roman Catholic Church, Roman Catholicism. Where is this Hebraic culture coming off the slave ship? He has not shown this unambiguous. He hasn't said it clear as day, like, yo, here's the dagger. Boom. He brought up the three, the three stuff. I, I must admit that was a good, good opportunity to dagger me. But hey, come to find out, if you look at the Gullah Geech and the influence of Islam, some of them were praying five times a day and some were praying three times a day. So that is out the window. It's not even a dagger no more. It's like it's soft like porridge, podge podge, poof, poof, gone. So I will say, ladies and gentlemen. As far as history, anthropology, even archaeology, where is the archaeological finds to back up anything that there's Hebraic within the African-American slave community or African-Americans who are free or maroon communities? Where is it at? Just show me and then I will accept it. But in the meantime, I have not seen any evidence of anyone coming off a slave ship, practicing this religion, practicing this culture, talking about Passover, talking about Exodus, talking about Yom Kippur, talking about Rosh Hashanah, talking about all these different things that are main. And most of all, the, the most heavenly part of all of this is he never mentioned one time that they called on the God. So how are these people practicing a religion and they don't even mention the God's name? That just kills his whole argument. Shame on you, bro. Next time, you have to reevaluate the, the, the sources that you're using in Africa. Yes, they may have converted to Islam or converted to, Christ, um, to, Hebrew, um, to, to Judaism. But my brother, even as converts, they would have remembered the God's name. They would have remembered God's name. Out of everything that you said today, not one example you ever gave that said, hey, they said Yah. They said Yahweh or Yahuwah or whatever name you want to call it. That is huge. So you're telling me out of all these 10 million people that came over off the slave ships, not one of them know Yah's name? Not one? Not one in the Caribbean? Not one in South and Central America? Not one in America? And we are supposed to believe they're following the culture. Come on, Dr. Vince Bantu, I got to inbox you later. Because you are, if you can't show me one person saying Yah, then the argument's over. And don't bring up the whole... um. 
Slave Wars is website with the yaw names because I already killed that a million times already. With the yaw names. Oh, they said yaw. Yeah, they said yaw, but those people didn't even come over on the slave ships. That's a damn shame. So again, Orthodox Moore has not shown any of these people that he's talking about. So he could show them praying to the east. So when they was praying to the east, they never said yaw. <laughs> they never said yaw when they come to the east. Oh, man. I don't know if people have ever read this book, Magic and Divinization, Early Early Islam. It goes into some of the things that they practice in the Bible that through Islam they adopted. So this is one thing also, how people adopt stuff, because I was always looking into live right, marriage, claromancy, ancestor veneration, menstrual stuff, separation, altar, shrines, libation. And this book actually helped me out in understanding pre-Islam stuff and while Islam is going on and how people, how people were who followed Islam also adopted things that was actually in the um the bible but i'll say this bro you did a good you did a good job today i love you i'm gonna steal some of your slides you know i always got love and respect for you i think you bring a lot to the table but i do want to make it clear you did not prove anything today as far as as far as winning this debate and i think the fact that you could prove somebody's praying to the east and i'm saying to myself why he never said that they call yah's name if yah is your god we're gonna have a record of you calling on yah and he has no records of that. So that is very strange for someone to claim that is Hebraic culture and they carried it over. That is extremely strange that somebody would leave out the fact that they did mention Yah. And that is very strange to me. Now, this is the whole Yah stuff with the um, Naya Moli. See the name? Nobody would tell me what this name means. Or Enya or Inya. But if you look on the records, as it appears in the registry, it has different spellings without the Yah in it and with the Yah in it. See? Naya Moli at the bottom, possible modern counterpart. And you see the two names plus Naya Moli. The same goes for when you look at the other names. It's like Inya. See? Enya, Enya, uh, Inya. So they don't even know what it sounds like. Again, it's a question sign. And guess what? These people left from one part of Africa, mainly like I think Nigeria, during the illegal slave trade, and ended up in Sierra Leone or one of them countries in Africa. They never even came over here in the slave trade. That's another, this was during the time of the illegal slave trade after 18, 1808. All right. So anybody using the Yah to the Yahweh and all that stuff, that don't even make no sense. All right. But I do want to, I do want to close out. How much time I got left on um, brother Bereen? Give me one second. Four, four minutes. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Four minutes. Okay. okay. I must also give my brother credit. He is totally against the 12 tribe charts. Well, I don't know if he's totally against it, but I do say he's in the realm of scholarship that I appreciate. All right. I do appreciate more for what he brings to the table. And yeah, in the heat of the moment, I may have said some things that, you know, I might have um, exaggerated on or embellished on. But I do think the brother is, um, is one of the best from that community. And I think, I hope he reconsiders his arguments based on the worship of a God, because that's the most important thing to anybody. Even in slavery, they're going to call on their God. And there's no evidence of them calling on Yahweh or Yahuwah, whichever way y'all pronounce it. And that's a huge, huge argument if you're thinking about people who are following the Jewish tradition or following that tradition. And I think that's something that the brother, I hope he goes back and think about it, like, why aren't they saying God's name? Why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing that? Even if you look at the um, the claims by Antio Antonio Montezinos, I mean, if, even if you look at his claims that he makes here about how they converted, the whites were on friendly terms with the native tribes in the era. We actually have primary sources that could document this and back this up. But at the end of the day, he's not making extremely wild claims. He's making a claim that these perfect people are converts, which is fine. And again, another reason for the BHI to hate you because they don't like that convert word. You know, I'm good with that. I'm good with what you presented. I'm good with that. I'm going to go back and look at some stuff. And um, with the wall off, with the, with the, um, in Senegal, well, the same spot, but wall off. And I'm going to look at the Mandinka and, um, or the Mandinka, whatever you said. I'm going to look back and, and study some more on that and look into it. But I don't think that my brother actually presented a case to make you say, you know what? They came off the slave ships and they were doing this. Nah, we can't, you can't, there's nothing definite that you presented. And I did my job by saying, hey, I was deflecting. I was changing the subject. I was making some bad appeal to emotions and so forth. Yes, I was, I must admit. But at the end of the day, all I wanted my brother to do is show and prove that 
there were people that came off the ships, the slave ships, and during their interaction as slaves, that we see them calling on Yah, we see them doing a lot of things. One of the first persons to use the Bible was um, Nat Turner. And I say this um, with all due respect to my brother. If the, if the slaves could not speak English, majority of them would not even claim to be Israel. We would not have a Hebrew Israelite movement if the Bible was accessible. But, well, some of them were converted on the slave ships or before, so they knew Christianity. But as far as reading the text and finding themselves in the text, we would not be here debating now about Israelites. We would not be doing that. And I think, I think that's one of the best things that I could have ever said um, today and, and realized. Because you know what? Many of us follow traditions. Many of us follow traditions and carry it over. My mom taught me a Nancy stories like I always brag about. We brag about the food. And you know what? Um, um, what you call hey, it? One minute. More. Let me, say, let me say this some more. Let me take this off the screen and let me turn my camera on. More. Let me say this. You did show culture in Africa, but you never showed it when they came off the boat. I'm going to say it again. You did show a lot of culture in Africa. I got to applaud you for that. Good job, brother. But it so happened again, it never came off the boat. That same culture that they're practicing, think about it for a second. The Wolof, the Mandinka, all those people you showed and said, yeah. How comes when they came off the boat, they don't remember? Divine amnesia. All I got to say, brother, good showing. And I'm going to say that if we, if we think about it, family, and to all the brothers and sisters that follow Bereen, man, keep the most high as, as forward. And I, I would think if the slaves came over, they would have still talk about the most high. Peace Thank and love, brother. So much, Thank man. you very Thank much. You much, so love, much. Much love and respect. Much love and respect to you, brother Bereen, also. Much love and respect to Orthodox more. And I'm here, man. If y'all need me, I got time. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Um, Anybody else? Um, Hebrew of Israel, you want to say something, brother? Ivory, you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, Sean, go ahead, beloved. Yeah, so hold on, let me get over here. Sit down. Uh, yeah, but I got a few questions. Um, by the way, good debate, both of you guys. It was uh, informative information. All right. Yeah, it was informative information. But uh, I do got a few questions for you, uh, Garfield. So uh, at the end of the of the debate, you said that more proved um, West African culture, you know, in West Africa, but he didn't prove the culture in uh, coming off the slave ships. Do I have that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, though, however, what when it comes to one particular culture, such as praying for three praying three times a day facing towards the east would you say mm -hmm. that came from west africa or was that like always in america um to, just to let you know somebody had texted me and um they actually brought a couple of sources out it's it's an eastern christian tradition and it's also a pentecostal tradition and it's also a tradition by muslims who were here sometimes they prayed five times and sometimes they prayed three times all right. So would you say that would have came off the slave ships, though, or would that have came from like Anglo-Saxon? You know, you know what, to be honest, it's a practice within the Gullah Geechee culture. I don't know where they got it from, to be honest. They okay. did it. And I don't think they're the only per people that did it, though, persons that did it. But most of the people that did it, they actually were Muslims. So who also did three and five. So that's what the person that actually texted me. But I'm going to look into it later on. Some more. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm just asking whether they're Muslims or Jewish or whatever, if it came off the slave ships. But all right, you said um, you're not quite for sure, but OK. Um, so another let me see. I had another. You want to wait? I let Sean go and then you come back. It don't matter because you're the only person here. Plus Sean. So a 93. But yeah, so I had a, I had a few more questions, but uh, I'm almost done with them. But so far. In the presentation that Moore gave, he spoke about, uh, you know, obviously Jewish populations being in West Africa, and he spoke about converts and things of that nature. Um, wouldn't you agree that when it comes even to the early formation of the Israelites, 
that basically they were an amalgamation of different ethnic groups. And so you because you don't believe in a paternal lineage of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob anyways, right? Um, say the last part. If I don't believe in what you, you don't believe in a paternal bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, like the story being, being literally written. like a literal one. No, no, I don't. Not right. Uh -uh. So the Israelites for you would be an amalgamation of different ethnic groups, correct? Um, I'd say they were they're Canaanites. Canaan, they come on the come on the Canaanites. That's what they are. They're Canaanites. Correct. Right. Correct. But as they begin to expand, like going to from Canaan to Babylon, then Babylon to the rest of the Middle East, and then into, mm -hmm. you know, yep, far I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they begin to become an amalgamation. That's why we have all these different, you know, haplogroups among Jews today, R1B, R1A, J1, J2, E1B, B, et cetera. So um, with that being said, wouldn't you agree that the concept of basically being an Israelite or a Jew is just uh, different ethnic groups that convert to the faith, correct? Like, And then once they convert, they are, indeed an israelite or a jew you're not supposed to speak bad about a convert would you agree to that that's tricky i'm gonna tell you why that's tricky the bible says one thing and it teaches one thing but you're saying another thing it teaches bloodline but it's not realistic to, to a lot of people so at the end of the day, it's about bloodline. At the end of the day, it's about bloodline. Interesting. Yeah. Because all throughout the scriptures, they're always, the Israelites are always mixing with other people and other people are being incorporated into the commonwealth of Israel. So I don't know if it's strictly bloodline from when I read yeah, Maybe that's the one West in me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't agree with the a strictly bloodline uh, concept. But, um. But still, you would say that it's an amalgamation of different ethnic groups, even looking at it from a yeah. You could tell you could tell from a, from a secular perspective, definitely a mix because yeah, you see them mixing with the women in Europe, you see them mixing um because they're trading and they go far away, so the men are sleeping with um a lot of different women from different cultures. I agree. I agree. And so, with that being said, um, when it comes to West Africans uh, converting to the faith, they're just another population that's joining the commonwealth of, of Israel that's becoming part of that that's Israelite story or that Jewish story. So would you well first of all, would you agree to that that, that when they convert when they convert they're actually becoming part of Yeah, Israel. that's the point. That's the point that um um more um drove home. That's a very good point. I don't have a problem with, with um with converts, but even when you're converted, you remember in Yah. Even when you're converted, you remember Yom Kippur. You remember Passover. Those things are important to you. Not yeah, I get all that. But I'm just, I just want to make sure I know for sure that when it comes to a convert, even when we're talking about West Africans, that they are, they basically are Jewish. You know, they are an Israelite once they convert. I just want to make sure I understand that. Yeah, Judaism um, is the new Christianity, man. They convert everybody except African Americans. I don't know why though. <laughs> You'll be surprised. They'll be they'll be trying if you live around Jews, but that's a whole nother thing. Let me not get into that. But um, all right. So my other question is, when it comes to the paper dealing with uh, Sub-Saharan African DNA, um, you believe that that Sub-Saharan African DNA was introduced around the time of the Assyrio Babylonian Empire, correct? Yep, around that time period. Yep. Okay. And you're saying that it would have came from the Nubians, right? Mm hmm Yep. Okay, so are you saying that there was basically West African type peoples in Nubia at the time? Because when it comes to that paper, uh, the three populations of Sub-Saharan African DNA being used is Yoruba, Luya, and African Americans. It seems to be a specific Sub-Saharan African population. Yeah, it's possible. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you would agree that there could have been like a West African type people in Newton. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. So uh, with that being said, um, but these. So when you Africans, think, when you think that the, the, um, the Sub-Saharan African region, you think it happened in the year two, like 2000 years ago? Personally, I think it was, personally, I think it was Egypt, but that's a whole nother thing. Because I know you don't believe in the Exodus narrative. That's why I asked you. But um, I think. It but, 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 but. But Ivri, that don't mean it's not Egyptian because if they're in Canaan, 
Egyptians were still in Canaan. Right, I agree. I agree with that, yeah. So whether, whether I believe in the, in the Exodus or not is irrelevant because that's what I said to the um, more originally when I read it. I say, yo, it could have been the Egyptians or whatever. Right, right, right. So either, you know, a sub-Saharan African type people around Egyptians or Nubians, basically. Um, yep. So that being said, um, so these sub-Saharan African peoples would have had to have mixed with the Israelites. That's why the Jews have this DNA. Mm -hmm. um, so would it be okay to say that some West Africans or some sub-Saharan African type peoples would have converted into Israel way back uh, 3,000, 2,000 years ago, around that time, if they're mixing? I don't think um, the religion, as far as how it's taught, would be um, was organized enough to say, hey, they took on the religion or whatever. But um, I think they could have been mixing. Um, 1400 um, BC, they could have been mixing. They could okay. have been mixing. I agree with that. I agree with that. So basically, the argument we could say is that, yeah, Israelites did mix with sub-Saharan Africans. Mm-hmm. I'd rather I'd rather use I'd rather use the term Hamites though. I mean, well, I don't I, I don't really. Use I'd that. rather use the term Hamites because I want to get on the BHI's nerves. So I'd oh, rather, yeah, yeah, I yes, they yeah, mixed yeah. with Hamites. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. well, okay, that's 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 all I want. If you would agree to Israelites mixing with Sub-Saharan Africans, and with that being said, you could still make the argument that some Sub-Saharan Africans would have converted back then if they're around the Israelites. I don't think there's any religion for them to convert to at that point. No, like if let's that's say why, that's why that's why I brought up Jonathan Adler's article. No, like basically what I'm saying is like let's say uh, some sub-Saharan Af sub African man was with a Israelite woman. You know, obviously he's more than likely going to convert to her, or maybe not convert, or just join in with with her people's customs and stuff. Because we see that all the time in the scriptures. Like that, basically that's what I'm asking. Would you say that that some of some sub-Saharan Africans could have uh, it's possible. joined in with Israel? Mm -hmm. It's possible. You said, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Okay. Um, I think that's about. I have another question, but I'll let y'all finish that. Go ahead. Tell me your question. What's your question, bro? Oh, y'all, y'all done talking about uh, the slides? Yeah, we good. All right. So would you would you say Garfield that some African Americans could have Israelite ancestry via autosome? Yeah, it's possible. Not that possible, but it's it's a, it's possible. Oh, okay. And that, by the way, by Israelite autosomes, I'm also including uh, like Canaanite autosomes as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was, I was. I think that might be my my last question because of. You, you know, you know the um the report from 2017, right, with Cell, where they talked about um 50% of the modern day Israelites are um 50% connected to the, the Canaanites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know about that. That's right. why I, that's why I included Canaanites as well. Because yeah, that's, to me, to me, that's probably the best one out there because they have the most samples anyway. Like, 